Okay, so uh, hello everyone, uh, even though I don't think there's many people in the room right now, but whatever, we're gonna continue with uh, the exercise with the... Oh, that looks like Santa Claus. We're gonna continue with Advent of Code, and uh, so in the previous stream that I did, we went from uh, day one to three. Uh, that took like one hour and 20 minutes or so. So that's uh, like a little bit over 20 minutes, like 25 minutes per day. So today I have an hour and the goal, hey, Evni, uh, good evening, Beaver Rob. Uh, so the idea here is to basically do as much as possible. Um, hopefully we'll do four and five, but if I only do four, that's also fine. Let's see how it goes. So, all right, so let's read. So day four, repose record. You've, sne you've sneaked into another supply closet, and this time it's across from the prototype suit manufacturing lab. You need to sneak inside and fix the issues with the suit. But there's a guard stationed out station outside the lab, so this is as close as you can safely get. As you search the closet for anything that might help, you discover that you're not the first person who wants to sneak in. Covering the walls, someone has spent an hour studying every midnight for the past studying every midnight for the past few months, secretly observing these guard dogs. They've been writing down the ID of the guard on duty that night. The elves seem to have decided that one guard was enough for the overnight shift, as well as when they fall asleep or wake up while on their post, your, your puzzle input. For example, consider the following records, which have already been organized into chronology chronological order. So guard tends begin shift, Five minutes later, falls asleep. That's pretty easy. Uh, 20 minutes later, wake up. Five minutes later, falls asleep. Then uh, wakes up 25 minutes later. And then 99, begin shift, fall asleep directly. Wow, uh, falls asleep after one hour. Okay. Uh, so time stamps are written using the year, month, day, hour, minute format. Okay. The guard falling asleep or waking up is always the one whose shift most recently started because all asleep awake times are during the midnight hours. Zero to zero fifty-nine. Only the minutes only the minute portion zero to zero fifty-nine is relevant for those events. Wait what? Oh, because this is around midnight every day. Uh so guard ten begin shift, so that's another day. Uh, and that is day, right the day before. Okay, so this is day one, this is day two, this is day three, this is day four, this is day five. Okay. Um, and I guess the important thing is that this can be on the day before because there's two minutes before midnight still counts as these guards doing all of this. Cool. Um, visually, these records show that the guards are asleep at these times. So this is awake. Good morning. Uh, good evening to me. <laughs> uh, okay, the columns are date, uh, which shows the month day portion of the relevant day ID, uh, which shows the ID which shows the guard on the, the, the day of the day, a minute, which shows the minute during which the guard was asleep within the midnight hour. The minute column's header shows the minutes 10 digits in the first row, and then, okay, awake is shown as dot, and sleep is shown as pound symbol. So then the interesting one is this one, because it's two minutes before midnight. This one starts, so it's 11.02, and it's not even counted. So I'm assuming that they cannot be awake before, they cannot fall asleep before midnight, because they're, they're supposed to start working at midnight, so they don't fall asleep before they start, which I guess is good. Um, okay, so here that is uh, 40, which is when he falls asleep. Cool. Uh, okay, not that the guards count as asleep on the minute they fall asleep, and they count as awake on the minute they wake up. Okay, so even though this wakes up at 50, it actually, the last one that Mark asleep is actually 49. 
if you can figure out the guard most likely to be asleep at a specific time, you may have be you may have, you may be able to trick that guard into working tonight so you can have the best chance of sneaking in. You have two strategies for choosing the best guard minute combination. Strategy one: find the guard that has the most minutes of sleep. One minute, one minute does the guard spend sleep the most. In this example above, guard ten spends most minutes sleep, a total of fifty minutes, while guard nine only slept for a total of thirty minutes. Guard 10 was asleep most during minute 24 on two days, whereas in any other minute, the guard was asleep when was only seen on one day. All right, so this is 24, because this is 10 and 10, uh, while guard 99 is always asleep at 45. Interesting. Um... While well, this example listed the entries in chronological order, your entries are in the order you found them. You need to organize them before they can be analyzed. Okay. Uh, what is the ID of the guard you chose? So according to strategy one, which is find the one that slipped the most, and then find the minute where they slipped the most, the most often. So, uh, well, what is the ID of the guard you chose multiply by the minute you chose. Interesting. Okay, right, cool. So, uh, let's get the puzzle input and copy this. Uh, actually, I prefer working with something like this first, a little bit smaller. Uh, and then, let's go to github.com, boy, add enough code. Uh, by the way, this is online already, so if you go to github.com slash compose slash advent of code 2018, you'll find my code for the previous days. Uh, they do day three, part one. Uh, and wait, that already exists? Oh no, day four, that's what we're doing, right? Day four, yeah, day four, part one. And we're gonna copy the skeleton into day four part one main dot go and then open day four part one cool all right and we're gonna create one more file which is gonna be input.txt and we're gonna put not that but the input from the example which is the smaller one this one here and this one is ordered but it doesn't need necessarily need to be ordered so First thing, we need to read all of this. So we're gonna need to read falls asleep, wakes up. So I guess that we're gonna do some analysis on whether has falls asleep, wakes up, or guard something. And we're gonna do different things according to that. Uh, so this is reading. So to start with, we're gonna have to extract this part. So we can probably get the first space. Even, I mean, we could be lazy and say that this is column nine, column 19. So we can get that and just parse it. But I feel like that will be a little bit too easy to break. So let's do, so the text is this, so strings dot index of t of let's find the index of that which is where we close it and we're going to do t of one to that that's going to be the corresponding part of this date inside so i'm going to call that date text let's call it text let's use a little bit larger function na uh, variable names uh, and you could actually just split the input into lines and sort the slice. Uh, you could split the input into lines and sort the slice. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm first reading everything and putting it into, into a slice of things. I still haven't decided yet what exactly. But, but yeah, uh, I want to represent the data in a better way and then write the algorithm. That's, I prefer doing it like that. Uh, so basically, we're gonna have um, we're gonna have a type event which has a time, which is a time dot time. Um, it always follows a pattern of shift, start, waking up, and then falling asleep. 
Yeah, it does, but at the same time... Oh yeah, I could maybe do like... Instead of... We can do shift. So it's... We have the ID, which is an integer. Uh, we have time. Uh, and we have... Is that time enough? Uh, we have start. We have sleep. Time uh, time and awake. Time time. So these are the three times we have in every shift. So then we can do time dot parse, and the layout's gonna be. I never remember. Uh, go and or package time. In the example, there is a shift that sleeps twice. I do not think so. These are different days. Because it's twice the same guard, but this is on day four, November 4, this is November 5th. So I don't think that's a problem. I think that's actually fine. And if not, the first one? Oh yeah. All right, so yeah, no, I gotta do that. Um, uh, so that's not gonna that's not gonna cut it this way of doing it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm do I'm gonna do event, and then gonna have uh, what happens, and then let's do like good go here. So uh, kind, I'm gonna have uh, event kind, and then time is this. And then type event gun. It's gonna be uh, let's say it's a a byte, and we have a event start equals event kind of iota, and then we have event asleep, event awake. Cool, so uh, that way now we can have our events, uh, which is a slice of event, obviously. And what we're gonna do is, uh, so every time we're gonna parse the date, and that's what I wanted to do is, the format is something, January, what is the date? This is the date, okay, so. It's, su it's supposed to be easy to remember, but I never remember. Like the key is like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but I never remember. Uh, so we are parsing this input. Let's put it there. Let me move this. So we have year, 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 month, month, date, date, hour, hour, minute, minute. Uh, oh, but that's not how it works. I'm dumb. So that's going to be... So the year, it's supposed to be 2006. So 2006. The month is going to be January. So 01. And day, it's going to be 02. The hour is going to be 15. Uh, yeah, 15. And then 04. You really need to pause the time. Just sort it and grab the minute later. Nah, I still want to pause it. If, oh, I missed a event. Event. Oh, yeah. Good catch right there. Event awake. Uh, so we're going to parse the date tags, and that's going to give us a date and an error. If the error is not nil, I'm just going to log fiddle f could not parse date. This and this is why. Remove this. So gonna parse the date text, and this is why. Error. Uh, why are you complaining? Date declare not used. Yeah, I know. I'm getting there. Um, okay, so now we're gonna do events equals a pen of events event and. 
So when we see the the input, so this says that it can be in any order. But at the same time, we need to know the order of the guards. So we know that the false asleep is the guard 99. Do we know because the order or do we know because of the dates? Probably we know because of the dates. So if this moves like this, so now false asleep is before, this false asleep is temp in uh, chronologically is after guard 99 begins shift so it's still guard 99 yeah so you need to order first so so here we're gonna do is go back to the code so what I'm gonna do is for now keep it like this and I'm gonna have event e so event ID is gonna be Hmm. Yeah, okay, so I see why maybe it's worth and the uh, parsing it should work. All right, so let's do it like that. Uh, so let's change this a little bit. Uh, let's do OS read file of input.txt. And that's going to be bytes and an error. If the error fails, we fail, but we'll need to close it. Now, instead, we have. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you can sort it by date or you can sort it by string, but we're given this format is exactly the same. So that's why. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the whole file, divide it into lines, and then sort those lines and iterate over them, creating the events. So that way, everything will be sorted and I will know that which a guard is every time. Um, all right, so we parse these. We do um, strings dot split of b of this, and that's gonna give us the lines. So lines is this. Uh, we're gonna need to convert this to string. That's fine. Uh, and then once we have that, the next step is gonna be sort the strings of lines. And then we're gonna iterate for line range lines. We're gonna drop this and say line. And it's gonna be line. So that is date text, date text. Um, we also gonna keep track of the guard, but I guess we don't need to do it uh, like that. Okay, so we we can do is uh, get the rest. So actually, date starts gonna be this index. So this is gonna go from here to date start. And then message is line from date start plus plus one and on. And then, so now we're gonna do, actually a plus two technically, but who cares? Uh, so that's gonna give us basically this part. And now we need to decide whether we're reading one or the other. So let's do, Actually, let's do this. Uh, we can do strings.fields of this plus two, because that way we ignore this space here too. I, I want to make sure it's not there. And then we're going to switch on, so pieces, switch on pieces of zero, case guard is one, case wakes uh, false and case wakes. Uh, that should be false wakes and guard, yeah. And so with that, we should be able to do, so let's create an event. Uh, event, actually E, it's an event. 
where the dime is date. And then if this is a guard, we need to read what is the item, which is going to be number 10 now. So we need to get the pieces of one and to drop the first element, which is the, the hashtag or the pound symbol, and then do string convert a to i. That's going to give us an integer, actually an id, and an error. If the error is not nil, log fatal f could not parse id in this text is the error. We're going to do that pieces of one one and the error. Uh, that would also e dot id equals id e dot kind equals event start. Uh, if it's false, we're going to do e dot id the equals events of len of events minus one dot events uh, dot id so that's going to be the same in this case here we're going to do kind equals uh, event sleep and e dot kind even awake. Cool, and then we're gonna do a pen of that event. And then we can drop this part too. Uh, and instead we're gonna do find guard uh, of events and that's gonna return ID and minute and then we're gonna do print ID times minute. Um, this complaining is much event and int. Uh, so this is length of events minus one, like this. And same goes here. We're getting the last event. And we know there's always one because uh, we can never start before a guard appears. So that should be fine. Um, uh, read IO util read file uh, and find guard is still undefined so func find guard events event returns id and minute and I call it minute I guess id and minute which are integers and for now it's going to return zero, 0, but for event range events, print that. Just want to see that we are actually parsing the thing correctly. Minute, minute. Okay, so let's run this. Go around and go. And actually I don't like how this is printing it, so let's do plus V. That will give a little bit more detail when you print it, and it will give the, nam the, na the name. Okay, so the time is not that important, uh, but the important thing is we have kind 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, and that is 1, then 90, 99, 0, 1, 2. Yeah, so that looks pretty good, um, but actually, let's do actually make this kind of unnecessary but I like to do things well so we can say that if you have an event and you do string string you're gonna return so switch uh, switch e dot kind case uh, event start we're gonna do return a spring dev guard these starts. Uh, okay, uh, case event asleep. 
Uh, so that's going to be actually ID. And there's going to be S. And that's going to be S. Date equals time dot actually e dot time dot format and let's use the same date format that we have before just this one right here uh, but actually we'll need the year either so we can simplify it a little bit so we're gonna get just this and this and we're gonna use the date here date date EID uh, sleeps and event awake wakes and otherwise return um, as printf unknown type event type and that is the event. And let's add actual values. Cool, so now if we do that and we change this to back to print the land of E, we should have something that makes more sense. Cool, uh, we have a zero at the end. Oh yeah, the zero is the printing of the ID and the minutes, cool. Um, okay, so that looks pretty good. Let me put this up, up a little bit so you can actually see the the chat perfect okay so the next step is going to be to actually do something with this so uh, first thing is we're gonna find per guard how often how much do they sleep because that's that's the rule right like we need to go here and say uh, mm -mm, strategy one uh, so Guard 10 spent the most minutes sleep at all of 50 minutes, 20, 25 plus 5. So we're counting uh, 20 here, 25 here, and also 5 here. All right, so uh, we need to count how much per, per guard. So let's do that. Uh, so let's do... Sleep times, it's gonna be a map from int, which is the guard ID, to int, which is the minutes, total minutes sleep. So then we can do, we can go over all of the events and do sleep times. So if, um, I guess we're gonna get the ID, the position two, because if, uh, the event dot kind equals e dot awake. That's because it was sleep before. So we can do uh, events of i minus one. If let's say if this is not e event asleep, then we have a problem. Log fatal uh, awake from guard this awoke from no sleep which is weird and that should fail and that's great uh, that's not how it works I meant sleep uh, and that is e dot id okay uh, otherwise we can actually say that sleep times of i e dot id plus equals e dot time minus so e dot time scenes there's a there's a scenes thing scenes uh, which is so there's a scenes time which is a function but also there's a method scenes or something. Uh, let's see, time. Oh, probably is subtract sub, right? Yeah, so t minus here, cool. So we're gonna do the time where he wakes up, which is e.time dot soup uh, 
events of i minus one dot time. Uh, dot minutes. Uh, because that is a duration. Actually, no, that's good. That should be a that should be a duration. Time dot duration. Uh, log fatal f. Okay, so now and then for ID and duration, range sleep times, print land ID duration. Okay, so now they should print. All right, so guard 10 slept 50 minutes, guard 9 slept 30 minutes. Perfect. So the next step is to sort those. Sort that slice of. Uh, actually, nope, that's not so. Uh, max sleep is gonna be uh, zero. So, sleeper is gonna be the ID. And max sleep is the time, which is gonna be also zero. So, for K, for ID duration range of sleep times. If duration is more than max sleep, then max sleep equals duration and sleeper equals ID. Uh, max sleep, you can compare durations. Oh, max sleep should be time dot, time dot, let's do it at duration, time dot duration. So var time dot duration. And sleeper declare not use because we're not printing it, but that's what we're gonna be learning is sleeper here. So let's print it separately. So that should return 10. Perfect. Okay, so now we have the number of the guard. Uh, so the next step is to figure out at what time the guard was sleeping the most. Uh, should the max sleep be time dot duration? Yes, I think there's a huge, huge um, lag because that's probably you'll get there soon. Um, I wonder how we can improve the, the lag. It's kind of a pain, but whatever. Okay, so the next step is now I know that the, the who's, who's the guard that's led the most. So now we need to find what minute is it that he was mostly asleep. And uh, we could do this in a couple ways. So is it true that this is always in between midnight and uh, midnight? So someone has spent an hour starting every midnight uh, for the past few months secretly observing these guard posts. <coughs> Okay, only the minute portion is relevant for those events. Okay, so we actually don't even care about the hour itself, so we know everything is midnight. So we can definitely do just a slice of uh, 60 elements and just go from, from that. That should be crazy. Well, let's try that. So if we do uh, minutes equals make of int of 60, and then for, we're gonna iterate over all of the events actually, for e range event. Uh, if e dot events, if e dot uh, id is not sleeper, then continue, because that's not the one we care. Otherwise, we're gonna go for i equals, okay, so we're gonna do, we're actually gonna need that i. So, if it's sleeper or e dot kind equals uh, e dot start, we don't really care about those because they all start, I guess, before. Can they start late? 
begin shift. Yeah, they start late. So if they begin the shift late, we could say that before they start the the shift, they're sleeping. Uh, how does this show it? Uh, 11 or 3? No, it shows it as they're awake. So I guess we should just, we should count those as they're awake. So we don't need to um, event start. So we can ignore all of those. Otherwise, we're going to get and go. Uh, so actually, even. So if it's not event awake, then we don't care. Much easier. Uh, so now what we do is, uh, we know that event is awake for sure, and sleeper is the good one. So we're gonna get the previous one and do events of i minus one dot time dot minute, minute. So minute, that's an integer. Uh, for i equals this i smaller than e dot time dot minute i plus plus we're going to say minutes of i plus plus and then um, for i so max count is going to be zero for i and C range minutes max count uh, max min minute which is zero so if C is more than max count then max minute equals I and max count equals C and return max minute Okay, so now that says 24 and 10. And that makes sense because that is the uh, output they expected, right? Uh, 24 and 10, which multiplied is that. So we need to multiply here and remove all the printing because we're, oh, we, we're not printing anything extra. So that says 240. Cool. Uh, so now let's get that input, put it here. That's the number we get, which is a magic number. And then I put it here and we hope for the best. Cool, correct. Okay, so uh, that was that was pretty complicated actually. Um, <coughs> it kinda, I'm sure we can make it better because we're iterating here and then uh, iterating this. We can probably do all of these things at the same time, to be honest. Um, let's see, I mean, nah, not that interesting, I'd rather continue. <laughs> so I'm going to keep it like this, but basically all of these four loops could actually be integrated probably into one, to be honest. I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a better way to do it. This one is probably the most straightforward way that I can imagine though. So that's pretty good. Um, okay, so uh, git add, git commit, m, day for part one. And then uh, let's do part two. Uh, so part two, it's strategy two. Of all guards, which guard is most frequently asleep on the same minute? In the example above, guard 99 spends minute 45 asleep more than any other guard or minute, three times in total. In all the cases, any guard spend any minute sleep at most twice. Okay, so we're not counting the percentage, but we're counting the number. So let's copy day four into day four part two. And day four part two. Someone told me yesterday that if I do code dash r dot, it should open it here. And that worked, cool. Okay, right. so now we are in the new the new one. Uh, so we have min.go. 
And basically, the most important change is so we're going to be searching and everything, doing the parsing exactly the same, creating the events. It's going to be the fine guard that's going to change. So that's why I like changing like the parsing and the solving, putting in temporary pieces. Because in general, especially for these exercises, you end up having to change that later on. Uh, okay, so find guard, what we're going to do is we're going to find for every guard, and uh, for every minute, which guard was slipped the most often. So the data we're going to have is basically, so per minute, per guard, n, n times it was, uh, they were asleep, and then find highest and, and return the minute and the card, right? 45, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go directly into this, I'd say. Okay, let me command this out here at the bottom. And remove all of this. Uh, so minutes, we're going to have the 60 minutes and we're going to have a slice of, uh, actually I have a map from int to int. So that's going to be, for 60 minutes, we're going to have a map from the uh, guard ID to the number of times we saw them sleeping at that time. So, uh, if it's sleeper or event awake, we can ignore it, otherwise... For this, we're gonna go into minutes of, this actually looks pretty good. Uh, so minutes of I, uh, of, so minutes of I of e.id plus plus. And then we're gonna go max minute, max count, and max ID. So this is gonna be zero, max ID. Max ID. This seems, this could actually be correct. Well, other than for the fact that it doesn't pop. Uh, so we don't care about the IDs anymore. We're gonna do all of them. We're, just, we're gonna ignore everything that is not awake. And then e.id plus plus type in does not support indexing. Uh, what do you mean? Minutes is make of, oh no, it is a, slice of map of int, uh, which is kind of complicated, but okay, so that makes sense. We also going to need to initialize this. So um, probably we can do it here. Nah, all right. So if minutes of i equals no, equals nil, minutes of i equals make of map int int. Because otherwise that's gonna panic when it gets there for the first time. Uh, max count is matched, am I in? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna count id, uh, so that's gonna be our map. So this is the minute, this is the counts, Uh, this is the ID, this is the N, and what we're going to do is if, I think I put one more, if N is bigger than max count, then max minute equals minute, max count equals N, and max id equals id. Okay, so let's try it again with the previous data, which was here. No, uh, this one. Okay, so that's gonna go into our input. Nope, didn't want to open it, input. And this should return uh, something short. Go run and the go. Panic. Uh, line 95. Hey, 
did this minutes of I Oh yeah, okay, so that that's pretty dumb. I'm gonna do it here instead. <coughs> uh, so we're gonna go over all the minutes and minutes of I equals make of map of int int. Because we need to set it up before we start writing stuff inside. Okay, so four four five five. Is that what we expect? Four four five five, yeah, cool. Alright, so Let's go back to the previous version or the previous input data. Run it. We get that big number. Try it here. And yay, one goal star. Cool. Uh, so that's it for today. Um, I wanted to do around almost an hour. So we're pretty much done. And with this, we solve day four, part one and two. Uh, I will be pushing all of these uh, online to github.com slash campo slash advent of code 2018. So that way you'll find me, you'll be able to find all the all of the pieces of code. And if there's anything, you can give comments on, I will publish this on YouTube too, on my YouTube channel, the justfunk.com. So yeah, uh, if you want to give put comments there or on the issues on the repo, that's also fine. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, see you all and thanks for watching. Bye.